What's up, navigation traders? Today is Friday, January 12th. Welcome to this week's video update. Hope everybody had a great week of trading. Let's jump into the alerts. We got quite a few to cover this week. Starting with XLV was our first trade. So we opened a new iron condor in XLV, a little bit different than our typical iron condor. We made this one a little bit tighter, almost, almost as tight as a butterfly partly because XLV is a lower price symbol. You know, anytime a, a symbol's under $100, if you are going to do a defined risk trade, a lot of times you gotta make that a little bit tighter so that you collect enough credit to make it worthwhile, to make it worth of the transaction cost and, and the risk reward. So let's take a look at XLV. If we took a look at our Analyze tab, and, and actually first you can see Earlier this week, implied volatility popped up above that 50 level, which is where we want it to enter a new trade. And you can see we've gotten some contraction since then, uh, decent price move up. So price is still within our range, but kind of hanging out towards the upper, upper end of our range. So need a little bit of down movement, a little bit more time to pass, a little bit more contraction in implied volatility to benefit that trade. Next trade was in XLU. So this was a closing trade. We had bought a butterfly and we were able to get out of this for about 20% profit. And so that was a nice trade. If we take a look at XLU, I was actually trying to get filled on entering a new trade this week because implied volatility is can you continue to stay nice and high. Uh, I did not get filled. so. Assuming implied volatility stays high into early next week, we'll be looking to enter a new trade, probably a, a butterfly or a tight iron condor or a strangle or, or something. I'll have to check out what the pricing looks like on Monday, but look for a potential new trade in XLU early next week. Next trade was in BABA. So we did a pre-earnings long strangle. Now, uh, we typically do pre-earnings long straddles, but in this case, price well, they, uh, price was right in between the strikes. So Baba has five point wide strikes, so we ended up buying a strangle. It worked out well. We booked uh, almost 30% profit in just five days. So if we take a look at a chart of Baba, what you'll see here is uh, we, we got in right here on the third, and so price was right in this area. Next few days, it just shot right up, gave us a quick profit, so that's, the, that's, the, that's just the way you write them up. So that was a great trade. Next trade was in uh, SPX. So we had a calendar spread on in SPX, and price in SPX continues to move higher, so we added another calendar spread. If we take a look at SPX, oh, where is it? There it is. So, I mean, man, this, this market's crazy. I mean, it just it just cannot find a down tick, but it just, so it just continues to move higher. So what we did is we added a second calendar and price has since even breached uh, that, that upside break even. So if we had enough time left, typically what we would do is we would roll this initial calendar up and, and, and kind of reposition that into, into a, a double calendar, but a little bit higher in price. The problem with this is we've got six days to expiration. Okay, whoops. So we've got only six days to expiration in the front month. So we are not going to make any additional adjustments, but I do want to hold on to it for another couple days into early next week. Now, could the S&P just continue to rip higher? Absolutely. If you are worried about that happening, then you can always just close the trade. And you would close the trade and take about a $350, $360 loss on this position right now. I, I'm looking for a little bit of a pullback. So if we can get a little bit of a pullback and maybe break even or make a little bit of money on the trade, that's what I'm looking for into early next week. Uh, you just, you can't plan for moves like this. I mean, this is just a crazy, crazy move with barely any pullbacks and even a further extension on top of a big move. So we'll continue to manage, we'll continue to play the probabilities, probably end up taking a loss on this. If you're worried about the market continuing higher into next week, you probably wanna take it off right now. I'm gonna hold off and wait, see if we can get a little bit of a pullback and maybe break even to eke out a little bit of a gain on this trade. 
Next, uh, next trade was a, an adjusting trade in Nat Gas. So it was kind of back-to-back -back alert, alerts on Nat Gas. The first was, was a closing adjusting trade where we bought back the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, we bought the Iron Condor back in Nat Gas there. And we booked uh, over 50% profit on that piece. And then on this one is where we did an opening adjusting trade where we added another iron condor out in the March cycle, okay? So if we take a look at net gas, we've got two positions on right now. One is the iron condor that I just mentioned. It's fairly centered, uh, just kind of hanging out here. Uh, implied volatility popped up a little bit today, so it shows we're down a tiny bit, but still well within our range. So we'll continue to monitor and manage that. And then the other piece of this is a call vertical spread uh, where price is, has moved well outside, looking for some downside movement in that gas to benefit that piece. And you can see I have this set up right here as a theoretical positions. I mentioned last week, I'm migrating all the alerts into a new account. So as I close and roll and manage those positions, I'm moving those over. This is a, an actual position that we have on, but I just set it up on here so I don't have to switch accounts to uh, to show you the show you the visual so need some down movement in that gas on that piece to benefit that next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in DIA okay so here's here's the here's the mistake I made this week and I've sent out now since we've started doing the alerts I mean hundreds and hundreds of alerts of alerts and I've made maybe four or five mistakes on those alerts as far as placing the trades incorrectly call that a, a fat fingered mistake and i actually i did it twice in a row so i really apologize for this it's it's it was kind of confusing i got a bunch of emails from members and i caught it right after i did it so i had to correct it so basically what we did is we had these two uh two verticals two call verticals in dia okay and we are rolling them, as I stated in the comments, from January to February. Okay, so, but what I accidentally did is I accidentally rolled them to the next weekly uh, expiration cycle, which is January 26th, the weeklies. And I meant to roll them out to February. So what I did, and I'll skip over this alert and then come back, is I came back and I set out this correction alert and saying the, the strikes, uh, the dates that I sent on these two are incorrect. And what I did was I corrected it with this alert showing that we are in fact rolling to February, okay? So let's take a look at the platform and I'll show you what we have now. So in DIA, we've got two different call verticals. One has three contracts and one has four. So sometimes I'll, I'll differentiate the number of contracts, A, because it makes it easier, and B, sometimes we're just, we, we're wanting to put on that size of a position in our portfolio. So the first one that has three con uh, contracts you can see here, and you can see since then, just like the S&P, the Dow has been very strong, so it's already kind of moved up uh, in price. So we need a little bit of a down movement to benefit that, but I like I like having this on. I mean, I like having that down downward bias, I like having that short delta bias in our portfolio, uh, because this market cannot continue to go higher forever. Now we are, we are positioned a little bit more short biased than I'd like to be, uh, but it's, it's tough to also put on long positions or take off short bias positions after the market's already ripped higher. So in this case, the pot odds are in our favor just to kind of hold this, and so that's what we're doing. I've seen this before. You know, this isn't something that has never happened before. Uh, it doesn't happen that often, but in this kind of situation, you've gotta be a little bit patient. And so we've got this one here, and then this one is just, just one strike different, uh, but very similar trade. So just looking for some downside movement in price to, to benefit that piece as well. So again, sorry for that mistake. I know it's kind of confusing, uh, and, and I am very, very particular about making sure I get these alerts right, but I am human, and sometimes a mistake can be made. So that's what that correction was all about. Hopefully everybody followed that. Uh, next trade was in the 10-year notes, so forward slash ZN, and the implied volatility of TLT, which is the corresponding ETF, popped up above 60, and so we wanted to sell some premium in an index-related product, uh, an interest rate-related product. As I said down here, you could do 
strangle or an iron condor in four slash ZB, which is the 30 year bonds, ZN, which is the 10 year notes, which is what we did, or you could do it in the ETF TLT. I prefer forward slash ZN, and the reason is, is just, it's kind of middle of the road. ZB is a very big, uh, a big product, meaning it, it takes a lot of buying power. TLT is an ETF, it's a, a smaller product, and ZN's kind of right in the middle, and I like trading the futures just for the bang for the buck that you get with the leverage on futures. So, if we go to the platform and take a look at ZN, You'll see here, still very centered. We're up a little bit of money on the trade, about 60 plus dollars. Not enough to take off yet, so we'll continue to wait on that. If we take a look, remember on ZB and ZN and TLT, you have to use TLT on the charts to view an accurate reading of the implied volatility. So we're always gonna use TLT for the implied volatility reading, but then we can trade ZN, TLT, or ZB, okay? Uh, and as you can see, this has been a great trading vehicle. We've had implied volatility spike up and then contract, spike up and then contract. So every time it pops its head up, we sell some premium, wait for it to contract. And assuming price stays in a decent range here, we will uh, we'll look to book this profit uh, maybe next week, maybe the week after. We'll, we'll keep you posted on that. Next trade was another rolling trade in IWM. So we had a call vertical in IWM. And, and remember guys, whenever, we're, whenever we're, we are rolling, uh, whether you're trading on Toss or Tastyworks or whatever it is, almost every platform allows you to do these rolls in kind of one transaction. And so, but remember, if you are not proficient in rolling yet, all you gotta remember is basically that we, so we're rolling from January to February and we're adjusting the strike. So the, we took the 151, 155 call vertical in January. And essentially when you roll, you're essentially closing that one out and you're reopening a position in February. In this case, we repositioned it to the 157, 161. So we keep the, the spread, the, the wing width the same. So you can see it's four points wide but we're just rolling that from January to February. So if we take a look at, uh, at IWM on the Analyze tab, you can see this is what it looks like. So we've got the 157, 161 call vertical. So remember, if, if you're not completely comfortable with, with the whole rolling functionality, once, uh, once Tastyworks comes out with some of the other uh, features and, and, and uh, functionality, We'll be doing some in-depth, detailed videos on every aspect of each strategy and how to roll and that kind of stuff. Uh, within, the, within the courses, we already have uh, features of, of how to do that on TOSS, so I'm not gonna go over that here. But essentially, you're, just remember, when you're rolling, you're closing one piece out, you're reopening in the next cycle. And we're doing that to one, extend duration, because we, we still want that position on. And, and then we wanna you know, just continue to manage the trade from that, from that perspective. The other thing I mentioned on this alert with IWM is you know, implied volatility is, is so low here. We've got an IV percentile of four, IV rank of 16. So I'm not adding another iron condor on here yet. If we do get some downside movement or a pop-up in implied volatility, I will add another iron condor in IWM to continue to manage that trade, but with implied volatility that low, I'm not gonna do it. Even if it got up to an IV percentile, let's say of, of 25 or 30 or 40, I would consider putting on, uh, adding a new piece to that trade now, uh, at that point. But uh, with implied volatility as low as it is, we're just gonna continue to manage the trade as we have it. Next trade, another rolling adjusting trade in the queues. And, and Keep in mind, I know we had a lot of rolling adjusting trades and I got quite a few questions by email. Uh, once we get down to that kind of under 10 days to expiration and, and into expiration week, we're gonna be rolling those positions that we wanna keep on. We're either gonna close them out or we're gonna roll them. And in this case, with the, with the market just continuing to rip higher, we wanna keep these positions on. We wanna keep that short bias in our portfolio. So. We had two, kind of similar to DIA, we had two positions on in the queues. We had uh, two ver uh, call vertical spreads. So we simply just uh, rolled those from January to February. And in this case, again, we were adjusting the strikes from 155, 158 
and moving that to the 163, 166, okay? And then the next one was very similar. We rolled from the 154, 157 strikes to the 164, 167. And, uh, and, and so if we take a look at the cues, we'll see, uh, you know, two very similar trades. I just, I, we could have rolled this all to the same one. So we have three contracts in each. We could have rolled this to six contracts with just uh, similar strikes. But I keep it separate because these were put on as separate pieces of the trade. So I wanna keep them separate. So I just simply kept the strikes one point different. So you can see the first one I have checked here is the 163, 166, and that's what we're looking at here. Just need a little bit of a down movement to benefit that piece. And then if I check on the other ones, I've got the 164, 167, just need a little bit of a down movement to benefit that piece as well. So that this rolling I know for new traders is sometimes confusing, but but don't don't give up on it. It's it's once you once you start to understand that you're simply just closing out one and rolling it to the next expiration cycle and reopening it in that further dated option cycle, it will it will become second nature to you. It's just a process of going through multiple rolls and multiple cycles to get to understand that. And that's why it's so important to stay small, keep your position size small, and make sure you understand and learn the strategies and the, and the rolling techniques and the adjustments before you start loading up and doing bigger positions. So hope that was helpful. We'll, we'll continue. We do this you know, every, every cycle. Every time we kind of get down to that last week of expiration, we're going to have multiple trades that we're rolling to the next expiration cycle to continue to manage, manage those trades. So it'll, it'll become second nature, but just stick with it and, uh, and, and, and watch how we do it, and you'll eventually uh, be able to do it no problem. Next trade was in EWZ. So we had an, uh, an opening trade in EWZ. IV percentile popped up to that 56 level, so we wanted to sell some premium. Uh, you know, with EWZ being a, a lower price symbol, I typically don't do defined risk, just because, like I said, it's, it's under $100, in this case, much under, it's, it's only a $43 symbol at this time. So you're just not collecting quite enough credit to do a defined risk trade. So we sold a strangle, and you can see price is still very centered, uh, not much to do there. So we'll continue to monitor and manage EWZ. And our last trade was a closing adjusting trade in forward slash ZW, which is wheat. So we had two iron condors on here. We closed out one of them, uh, got a nice contraction in the options today and booked over 50% of max profit on that piece of the trade. So working our way back nicely in wheat, and we've still got one other kind, uh, iron condor on in wheat. So if we take a look at the analyze tab here, you can see this one zeroed out. That's the one we just took off today. And then we've still got this one on where you can see price is sitting right here. Need a little bit of up movement in wheat to benefit that piece. And uh, we're, we're really close, probably another cycle or two away from getting back to, uh, getting back to profitability in wheat. So after that huge move that we had to dig ourselves out of, uh, we're working our way back really nicely. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of the other positions that we have on forward slash ES. So this is the last position that we need to roll from January to February. We've got, I think, what, six or seven days left in these, uh, yeah, seven days left. So we'll do that early next week. But we've got these uh, two pieces. We've got this long put spread, which has blown through the upside. So we need to roll that. Uh, again, this is just keeping, uh, keeping this in our, in our portfolio for that short bias. And then this other, uh, this other piece, which was part of what was an iron condor, uh, kind of a very similar trade, but just a short call spread. So we'll be rolling that uh, next week as well. Just remember, when we are selling premium, you always have to keep a short bias in your portfolio to, to protect yourself from the downside. Because even though the market's been continuing to, to move higher, and it seems like it's never gonna go down, it won't go up forever. And so we've gotta have that short protection on. And while it is a drag on our performance of the portfolio, while it's grinding higher like it has, uh, it, it won't do that forever. And so we've gotta keep that short bias for protection in our portfolio. So that's what we'll continue to do. 
Uh, next position that I haven't uh, gone over is four slash ZS, which is soybeans. So we've got two pieces on in soybeans. One is a full iron condor. We've got some profit in that, not enough to take off yet. So we'll hopefully look to book a profit in that piece early next week. And then we've also got this short put vertical on, which was part of an iron condor. Came down, came through our, our break even here. So we took off the call side. So we just need a little bit of an up movement in soybeans to benefit that piece. And that's in the February cycle. So we've still got a decent amount of time. We've still got 14 days left on that. So nothing to do for at least another week or so on that piece. And then our full iron condors out in March with 42 days. So we'll continue to monitor that one. Uh, another position, Costco. So we've got, um, we've got this short put vertical on. And remember, we put this on way back here, right after they announced earnings. And we were looking for uh, the price of Costco to kind of grind higher to sideways. Actually had a little bit of a dip on us. And now it's coming back the last couple days. So we're right at about break even on the trade, up a little bit, but we just need a little bit of up movement in Costco to benefit that piece. Uh, let's see, EWW. We've got a strangle on, a short strangle on in EWW. You can see price is kind of hanging out near the upper end of our range, but uh, no need to adjust yet. We just need a little bit of down movement there, a little bit of implied volatility contraction. You can see it contracted a little bit today. It need a little bit more contraction and for price to just kind of hang out, hang out in this area to lower, benefit that. Uh, IBM, so this is one that has earnings coming up. And so we are, and let's see, the earnings date is 118, so after March. So by the 18th, we need to be out of this trade. I don't want to hold this through earnings. This was a this was a, originally a straddle that we adjusted a couple times. And, uh, and we're down a little bit on the trade, but if, if we don't get a down movement in IBM and, and book this profit by the 18th, We'll probably close this one out for a little bit of a loser. Um, I We had that huge move last week up in IBM. It was, it was acting really nicely for us. In fact, I was trying to get Phil to get out for a profit right around here, and then it popped up here. But if we can get some downside movement and, and get out for a little bit of a profit or break even, we'll do that. But we're definitely going to be out before the 18th because I don't want to hold IBM through earnings. And then lastly, XRT. XRT has been a great trading vehicle. The implied volatility has been has continued to stay high. We're actually finally getting some contraction here. So if we take a look, we've got two different positions on in XRT. One is this short strangle here. I need a little bit of down movement, a little bit more contraction in implied volatility, a little bit more time to pass and uh, to benefit that piece. And then this is one of the other pieces that is still in the other account that I have not uh, migrated over yet. Let me reset this so I can check that. So, uh, so this is a real position that we have on. I'm just showing it as a theoretical position here for the video to show you where we're at. Sold that at uh, 329. So need a little bit of a down movement to benefit that piece. And we're actually pretty close to break even. We've been we've been just in and out of these XRT positions. It's been a really great trading vehicle, uh, but uh, needs some down movement in price to benefit that piece. So we'll we'll be monitoring that into next week as well. So that's all the trades. That's all the positions. Hopefully we get a little bit of down movement in the market, not only to benefit some of our positions, but also to give us a pop in implied volatility. When implied volatility is higher. That always gives us more opportunity for the, for the way that we trade. So look forward to next week. Everybody have a great weekend and we'll talk to you soon.